Psalms 82, a psalm of Asaph. The duty of the magistrates would be a good title for this chapter. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Strong. Right. He judges among the gods. Small g o d s. You got to understand. Even though there is one God, the Bible does record there are gods. But God is the God of all gods. And God will judge them gods one day. Not the gods judging God, but God judging them. And those gods all fall, fall under one name. Satan. How long will ye judge unjust, unjustly? See how America is not the Christian nation under God by this chapter. There is judgment going on unjustly. Unjustice. Not getting what they're supposed to be getting and not ruling the way they're supposed to be ruling. And except the persons of the wicked, see love. We are in a day in America today that when a celebrity goes before a judge because of who they are, what they do, how many footballs they do, how many basketballs they bounce, who they play, on what TV show, or whatever you have, what they are, they are let off or given a lightened sentence. As a matter of fact, they should be given more of a sentence because they, and what the position they are, especially of our children of America, are an example. And their conduct. And when you look at somebody because of who they are or what they are, and then you pass judgment based upon that, that is unjustice, according to the Bible. And when we, were, when Clarence and I was talking about judgment tonight, to realize that man doesn't even know what he's going to be judged. Imagine every judge in America. Every judge in the world, when they unjustly provided judgment to somebody because of the acceptance of person, because of who that person are, they're going to have to give an account. Now, if you've got a saved, born-again judge, has his preacher taught him this, this precept in the found in the Bible that he has sinned? That maybe he stood, stood in a courtroom, sat at the bench, and because that guy was somebody, whoever. And I'm telling you that the justice of America, because you can walk in there, belong to a secret society, and do a fee five fold fun with your fingers, or show a ring, or what have you, and they, the judge will honor you because your secret clubness is a sin. Noah's Sila. What's that Selah? The coming rightful judge, the Lord Jesus Christ, where he will pass justice and judgment rightly and holy. Defend the poor. How come no judges stood up in this nation to say that what the president and what Congress and what the House is doing is making the poor people poorer? How come no one stood up and said that all the promises of, of Obamacare has been lies and we need to throw it the whole thing out? As a matter of fact, it has made more costly for the poor people. How come that when a person today now has to work only part-time hours and he's poor and the company he's working for is getting richer and richer, how come they're not defending that poor person? How come the government tells you that you got to throw that food out because of something like that and you cannot give it to your employees who, who you have underpaid and can't afford it themselves? We are talking about 
judgment in this chapter and to realize when you don't defend the poor people, either saved or lost, the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, when you do not give justice to the poor people, you are found guilty amongst God and fatherless. Why is a, a person, and it's mentioned throughout the Bible, why are they looked down upon because they have no longer a father? What's the woman going to do? Listen, this is not the day of women's rights or anything like that. When the husband and father died at that house, the, the the wife the wife or the widow and her children are left to defend for herself, especially if those children are too young to work. Elisha or Elijah had a widow woman with two sons, and in order to pay the bills, he said, "Go get some pots, fill with oil, and then go fill, go pay, go sell the oil and pay your bills." And then the children couldn't work of age or what. And there was a thing that to for business and men that if you were poor or if you were a widow or you didn't have a father to take advantage of you. America takes advantage of anybody and everybody under them. It's called government and big business. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Why they been afflicted? Who did the affliction? Did you pass judgment upon them? The law that Moses wrote tells you what to do. And the needy. There's a reason why they are needy. And now this is not the kind of needy, oh, I don't want to work for, uh, for a living. I don't want to do nothing for a living. Give me a welfare check. That's not the case. Because God doesn't honor laziness. These people are doing what they're supposed to and they still have need. That's the American business today. There are people working today and they need. I'm telling you, American business today, these big corporations, there are big commercials and stuff like that and don't provide the, 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 the employees like they should, they're going to have to give an account. Deliver the poor and needy. From what? From the oppression, from the affliction. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. There's wickedness all around America. There was wickedness in Israel. And they were taking advantage of the people. That wasn't Boaz. Boaz walks in the field and says, Lord bless you and all the people. Lord bless you, sir. And they worked hard and they did their jobs. And he allowed the poor. He allowed the widows. He allowed everybody who couldn't make, come in my fields and, and pick like you were supposed to according to the law. You were supposed to help. Read the law. Go back to our studies when we went through uh, the law, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You see what the law had to say, what you were supposed to do. You were allowed them in your fields. I mean, they couldn't go in there with a reap and, you know, take out grocery bags and stuff like that. But they were allowed to sit there and eat. And what would you do that to today's fields? Well, if you go down south in, in Florida and there's apple trees and you, you, you take a couple oranges off the tree and there's the owner, he'll have you prosecuted. But how much can he steal from his employees and get away with it? How about that? How about these visits? Oh, we'll get you for shoplifting, but how much times have you stolen from your employees and you don't get arrested? Listen, the more you steal from the poor and all that, and you charge others with stealing, listen, that goes upon your account. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. That's the wicked. 
All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They don't know. They don't know what the law says. And they don't care what the law says. John 3, 19, they love their darkness. And they will not understand because they will not trust God. Very few Christian born again business owners are out there doing what they're supposed to. They're, they're mostly all wicked. The more money I get, I'll cut all kinds of corners. And, and if I'm a big co corporation, I'll pay Congress and all that to make laws and, and help me. I mean, the American people, they don't want a child car seat in their car. So I'll pay I'll pay somebody in, on Capitol Hill. They'll make it a law that you have to buy my product. We're, we're so interested in money that we'll build cars, build cars, build cars. But, oh, oh, mechanical defect. How many people suffered before the, the final recall notice comes out? And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I don't know what literally that verse means, but listen, the wicked and ruled, that unjustifies the earth. That affects a lot of people. Because if somebody's going to cheat the poor and needy, they're going to cheat their employee, they're going to cheat their customers, they're going to cheat whoever they can cheat, and people are getting cheated left and right. That's big business. That's business. And God was against that. God said you were to have a righteous, just weights. You weren't to have diverse weights. You had rules and regulations. God, I have said, ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. There are people out there who claim to be gods. There are people out there who claim to be Jesus. There are people out there who claim to be the religion. Popes speak, uh, proclaim that they're right there with God by the banner that's on their hat. Muhammad claimed that he was right there with the intercession with, with Allah. He was Allah's right hand man. I'm a child of the Most High by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Death and falling. Now we started this chapter out. It says. He judges amongst the gods. And we go into judgment. These people who, who are wicked in judgment. These people who, who put a burden on the poor and the fatherless and the needy. You know what they think they are? They think they're God. They think they have the power over people to do whatever they want. And God says to the judges, you are to stop that. You are to put them in their place. And that doesn't happen. But you shall die like men. Listen, Mr. Big Corporation Owner. You know what? You breathe like I breathe. You sit on the same kind of toilet I sit. I don't care if it's a $500 billion toilet. It's still, you are the same motions I am. You have lungs. You have kidneys. You have a tongue. You have, listen, you're just like me. You're no greater. But you're wicked. And that's where it separates ourselves. You're vile. And that's where it separates ourselves. And you're going to die like men. Death happens to everybody. Death is going to happen to me unless the rapture, as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, if the Lord tarries, I'm going to die. 
and fall like one of the princes. I'm not going to fall when I die. I'm going up. You wicked person will fall into hell. Luke 16 said, and he opened up his eyes after his death and then in hell. Arise, O God, judge the earth. And he's going to arise. The Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the second advent. For thou, God, shall inherit all nations. You know who gets the entire world? The Lord Jesus Christ. You know where the nations go that reject Jesus? That went for the Antichrist? They die like men and they, they, they fall into hell. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And literally their bodies fall to the earth. Because the Bible says like consume their eyeballs will be consumed in their sockets and all that. From that fire, from that sword that comes down. God has put judges, if you read Romans 13, and has powered them to fight those that think they're God, think they're better than anybody else, that thinks their poo-poo don't stink, and God has sent these judges and put you in charge as a judge to stop it. And yet, it's getting worse and worse. And I'm here to tell you that God is going to judge you for what you didn't judge. Saved or lost. Put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and rest your hope in God. God will take care of it. If you are under burdens of, of, of an employer or, or whoever, and if you're saved, arise, O oh God, judge the earth. Listen, when God arises to judge the earth, guess who's going to be behind him? Every born-again Christian. Who do you think at that time when the Lord comes back, he judges amongst gods? Now you go back, and we're not going to read it again, but you go back and you read this chapter as the Antichrist. You know, you, work, you look at the word poor. As far as the tribulation period, what's the only reason for you, for you to be poor in the tribulation? You don't take the mark. So it looks like to me, and this is my own, you can take this and throw it in the garbage, okay? You don't have to believe this. But what does the morons teach? That if you have multiple wives, that there, there's little people out there in outer space, and they come down, and then when you die, you become one of their bodies in outer space, and you become as gods. That's their doctrine. You know what it looks like to me? You don't have to take this. You don't. This is not doctrine. But it looks like those that do take the mark in the tribulation under the Antichrist, looks like they, they consider themselves, maybe Satan gives them a promise that you are gods. I don't know. But the only way to be poor in the tribulation is you don't take the mark. And if you don't take the mark, you think the judges are going to give you the right hand of justice when they are under Satan? And under the Antichrist and under the false prophet? What's the only victory you get from the tribulation period? Psalms uh, verse 8 says, Arise, O God, judge the earth. Why? Because the earth is in complete wickedness, it says in Thessalonians, that Satan is running about, for thou shalt inherit all the nations. The righteous judge of all is going to go against the gods. The Antichrist. The false prophet, it almost says Santa Claus, Satan, and he's going to take care of that. There will be no justice in the, in the tribulation period. Because if you've got somebody who's got the mark versus somebody who doesn't have the mark, guess who's going to win? 
And where do you see that today? You see that with these secret organizations, the Masons and all that, with their little rings and their secret handshake, that they walk in a courtroom, they do it, and the judge is part of them. He recognizes it, and then the case goes to that person. I don't care if that case is tried out for 46,000 quadrillion years. That judge will sit in that seat and he will allow that guy because of who he is and what organization he is. You can waste a trillion dollars for the case. That guy is going to win because he has the ring or the secret handshake. And that's how that works. That's injustice. And when the Antichrist steps up and because you got that mark, you win. I don't care if you lost. I don't care if you're the loser, you win. And when you got people today in 2014 who can't survive, who, who barely make it a living because they're oppressed by their employer, and you can't you can't afford a lawyer that charges four hundred dollars an hour, and no judge is standing up. Even though some counties, I believe this county elects the judges, they won't stand up and stick for us. Very few. All right? Their silence is not golden. Their silence will stand before God. Saved or lost. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior